for Wake Forest, and the Demon Deacons are off to their best start ever in ACC play. Coach Frank Beamer and the defending ACC champion Virginia Tech Hokies look to rain on their parade as the two teams battle it out in a pivotal ACC matchup next on ESPN3. Welcome to ACC Football on ESPN. Tonight's presentation of college football on ESPN3 is presented by Sprint. All football, no limits, only from Sprint. Tonight from BB&T Field in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the Virginia Tech Hokies meet the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. A quick check of the standings in the Atlantic Coast Conference shows you why this is a critical game for both these teams. Wake Forest trying to stay undefeated in the league play in the Atlantic Division. Virginia Tech can't afford another conference loss after losing at home to Clemson earlier this month. Very pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Weekly, happy to be alongside Greeny and Goliad, former tailback at UMass. We talk about Virginia Tech. They have won seven consecutive games here in Winston-Salem, but Wake Forest is one of the most improved teams in the nation. Gunning for their fifth win tonight, trying to go 4-0 and in ACC play. Logan Thomas, the outstanding quarterback for Virginia Tech, had an eye-popping performance last week against Miami in Blacksburg, but he's going to get a tough test tonight for that Wake defense, vastly improved in a 3-4 look. Yeah, Thomas really did have the game of his life last week, completing 23 of 25 passes, 310 yards, three touchdowns, throwing another two rushing touchdowns, including the game winner with a minute left, and you really have the best performance in ACC thus, thus far. Josh Harris is the top tailback for Wake Forest. He's been nursing a hamstring injury all week. He might get a couple of touches tonight, but we anticipate that Brandon Pendergrass, the fifth-year senior, senior, will get the majority of the carries. Well, you said he's a fifth-year senior. He's very experienced. He has nearly 300 carries in his career, well over 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. He knows what to do with the ball when he gets it. The big difference between he and Harris, Harris has that breakaway sprinter type speed. Pendergrass, a really good north and south runner, gets you those positive, tough yards. And Chris Gibbons is one of the big play guys in the ACC this year. Well, absolutely one of the top receivers in the ACC, certainly one of the fastest. He can make a big play, break a game open at any time. He has 33 receptions on the year for 599 yards, averages 120 a game. He'll be Tanner Price's number one target tonight. We are sold out here tonight in Winston-Salem, a full house on hand to see Wake Forest host Virginia Tech. Wake Forest has not beaten Virginia Tech in Winston-Salem since 1970. Our kickoff is next. Virginia Tech has won the toss. They have deferred. Let's send it down to the sidelines. Meet the third member of our team tonight, Angela Mallon, standing by with Jim Grove, the head coach of the Demon Deacons. Thanks, Dave. Coach, a year ago we talked about Tanner Price, and you said it's so hard to ask a freshman to lead your team, but the scales have really tipped for him this year. Well, I think a little bit of experience. We knew we had a great kid. You know, last year I didn't think Tanner played as bad as a supporting cast. We got some receivers were helping him a little bit. We're protecting him a little better. He's a great kid. You're going for your 100th win today. What's going to be the difference maker in this ball game in terms of the outcome? Well, probably having to go against Frank Beamer's team. You know, uh, this is always one of the best coach teams we play, uh, one of the more talented teams. So it's going to be a tough job for us tonight, but I think our kids will play hard. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate your time. And, Dave, for what it's worth, Frank Beamer did vote for Coach Grobe to be the midterm coach of the year. Whatever that means, he voted for him. Back up to you. Angela, that is very interesting when you take into effect that Wake is one of seven teams with winning records right now that had three or fewer wins last year. Louisiana Lafayette at five and one is a team that's the only team in the country that's got a better turnaround record than Wake. There's Frank Beamer. And Jim Grove, what a wonderful job he has done here in Winston-Salem. Lots of excitement for this one. Late arriving crowd, but we are going to be packed tonight, Greeny. This, this thing is sold out and has been sold out since Monday. Absolutely beautiful night for football. Can't wait to get this one underway. Cody Jornell is set to kick it off for the Hokies of Virginia Tech, who come in at 5-1, and 1-1 one, one and one in ACC play. Line drive kick taken by Noel at the seven yard line across the 20, 25, 
And bumped out of bounds at the 29-yard line, and that is where Wake Forest will start first and 10. Lots of injuries to deal with for that Virginia Tech defense. Angela's got more on that. That's right, Dave. Three players on the Virginia Tech defense are injured. They're very vital in the pass rush. They combine for a total of six sacks, 11 tackles for loss. So the big question is going to be, can these guys stop Virginia Tech? Can they at least slow down Tanner Price in the passing game? Here's Price, the lefty throwing incomplete up to the 42-yard line. Terrence Davis was the intended receiver. And there you see the numbers on Price. And he suffered a nightmarish game against these Hokies in Blacksburg last year. Just three of 16 for 92 yards at Lane Stadium last year. This year, it's been a different story. Much, much better. Well, he's a different quarterback. You know, a year of experience, boy, it does wonders for you. And you know he wants to come out and do a good game tonight. You know, he was a little pumped up on that first pass. Keep it on the ground. 35 up near the first down marker is Brandon Pendergrass, the fifth-year senior from Royal Palm Beach, Florida. Take a look at the offensive lineups for Wake Forest. Pendergrass and Bo Hannon, who caught a touchdown last week. Gibbons, Dembry, and Parker. There are two fifth-year senior tight ends. This is the biggest offensive line ever at Wake. Godfrey, Looney, Williams, Hogan, Weaver. It's a first down for Wake Forest. They take the opening kickoff and they've moved to their own 39 yard line. Gibbons is at the bottom of your screen. Pendergrass is a wing to Price on his right. Here's Price, the lefty. Protection is good. Contact at the 40 yard line. No flags incomplete. It'll be second and 10. Good sign for Wake Forest there. Price had a lot of time in the pocket, but great coverage by that Virginia Tech secondary. And you'll see it here, and they're actually going to send a late blitz when Pendergrass doesn't go out. He does a great job picking up the block there, but just no one home. They tried to run a corner route to the receiver, Campanero, and just nothing there. Good coverage by beat Virginia Tech. Operating out of the pistol now on second down and 10. Pendergrass directly behind Price. Price to throw again. A good pocket and a first down at the Virginia Tech 45-yard line. Put it right in to Terrence Davis. And Davis having a great year. Ten receptions on the year. You'll see, it. as you said, Dave, great pocket. Price steps up the lefty, gets into that throw, and throws a strike to Davis for the completion and another first down. Well, we do expect for Virginia Tech to be able to get pressure on the passer. They have 18 sacks here on the season. That is number one in the ACC and 10th in the nation. Deep handoff, Pendergrass. Well-designed running play. It's another first down for Wake. All the way down to the 32-yard line of Virginia Tech. Yeah, well-executed play. We're going to see it out of the pistol formation. You see Pendergrass hit it up there. Nice hole. And like I said in the open, he's a north and south runner. He gets positive yards. He's not flashy. That's my kind of running back. Boy, he puts his head down and he gets it. Not very big at 5'9", 200, but he knows how to run it between the tackles. The right guard, number 75, Michael Hogue, really did a good job. Plowed the road. And Pendergrass was able to shoot through there for a nice gainer. Here's Price on first down. Again to the air. Crossing pattern. Down to the 26-yard line. And the reception is made by Danny Dembry. Here's a look at that Virginia Tech defense. Collins, Hopkins, Marshall, and Wilson. And those aren't the names that you're most familiar with in the front four for Tech. Injuries have been a big part there. Taylor, Edwards, and Tweedy also getting a start tonight at the outside linebacker spot. The whip position. Whitley, Fulmer, Exum, and J. Ron Hosley. Hosley, one of the best defensive backs in the country. Second down and four. Price again. Hangs in the pocket. Pass is caught. It's a first down again. Michael Campanero, his first grab. Yeah, and it's just a shallow crossing route. They've ran that play twice in a row now. So obviously the late offense likes the matchups. Their receivers on a linebacker DB. And you'll see it. Campanero come across as the defender XM beat. And it's just a simple pitch and catch there between Campanero and Price. 
So after taking the opening kickoff, Wake Forest has driven to the Hokey 12. Price with a handoff. Pendergrass. And he did a good job to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Yeah, he's got a great center of gravity. You can see him. He was smiling there, shaking his head. He knew he almost busted that one. Good cutback. He's low to the ground. And like I said, north and south, and he almost popped that through. For this Virginia Tech defense ranked number one in the ACC, giving up just over 16 points a game. They've surrendered only two first quarter touchdowns all year. Givens in motion. He's got it. He wants to throw it. Fires late, incomplete. Davis was the intended receiver. Chris Hill had the coverage for the Hokies. Yeah, it's just the, the speed end around, and you can tell he's going to throw it. He, he's cocking his arm already. It just throws away. But, you know, usually we're used to seeing Campanaro throw that yeah. ball, and they switch it up on us and let Davis throw it. And Campanaro is three for three on the season with two touchdowns. This is the 10th play of the drive. Third down and nine. Price to throw again. Gets that ball away. And that will go as an incomplete pass. Heavy pressure on the lefty quarterback, and he had to get that ball away. Zach McCray. Yeah, McCray, you're going to see good pressure, never gives up. Price has time in the beginning, but the pocket breaks down. McCray does a good job. Price gets away with one there. Just take the sack there. He throws it. Lucky it's not intercepted, and it leads him on the field for a chance with a field goal. Yeah, Jimmy Newman is on to attempt a 28-yard field goal. He has made 10 straight since missing one in the opening game at the Carrier Dome against Syracuse. And Wake draws first blood. A 28-yard field goal. Caps a nice opening drive for the Demon Deacons. 11-19 to go in our opening period. Wake Forest 3, Virginia Tech nothing. The Hokies get the ball when we come back to Winston-Salem in just a moment. Seen before the game tonight, Bill Haas, PGA golfer, and of course a grad at Wake Forest. When you talk about golfers who come through this program, I think you got to start with Arnold Palmer, don't you? Well, absolutely. But Billy Haas, he's had, he had a great year this year on the PGA Tour. One of the great young Americans, and really, uh, you know, since Tiger Woods has fallen off the scene, these young kids have stepped up, and Billy Haas is one of them. A confidence-building drive for Wake Forest and Virginia Tech stiffened in the red zone, and now the Hokies going to get a chance at the football. David Wilson, he has got speed to burn. Newman with a kickoff. Wilson across the 20, 25, still picking his way forward, out to the 31-yard line. A good return and good starting field position for the first possession tonight for the Hokies of Virginia Tech. We'll get a look at the, the guy his teammates call Big L. Logan Thomas at 6'6", 242. He is bigger than many of the defenders along the defensive line. Yeah, I'm going to look forward to him running the ball tonight because he is a low. Tech will start from the power eye, and they will put it on the ground. And David Wilson is smothered up. There was nowhere to go as the Wake Forest defensive front Re-established the line of scrimmage. Boykin, Drager, Wilson, Phillips, and Danny Cole. Up front, Lanier, Nozell, Miller, Brooks, Blake to Christopher, and his beard. <laughs> That's a loss of three on the play. Second down and 13. So Thomas will go back out of the shotgun. Low snap, he controls it. Rolling, throwing. Incomplete, a big third down coming. Yeah, the one thing I can tell you, Dave, watching this Wake Forest team on film, they are a fast football team. They're one of the fastest teams in the ACC. You're going to see Thomas here roll out. He's a righty, but they roll him out to the left. And just a good break on the ball there by the defensive back, Kenny Okoro, to break that play up. And Marcus Davis was the intended receiver. Now third and 13.
four wide, two to each side for Thomas. Here comes the pass rush. He's flushed from the pocket, throws back across his body, going long, incomplete. Trying to get that ball to Danny Cole, and he was open. But it's three and out for Virginia Tech on their first possession tonight. I tell you what, though, Logan Thomas just showed the world his arm strength rolling to the left, right hand, and we're going to take a look at it. He threw this ball 60 yards in the air, rolling the wrong way for a right-handed passer. And you're right, Cole was open, just overthrew him. Michael Brandhover with the punt for Virginia Tech. Collected back at the 25-yard line, up to the 29. And that's where Wake Forest will take over their second possession. Demon Deacons at home at BB&T Field with an early 3-0 lead on 19th ranked Virginia Tech. 10.05 to go in our opening period. Wake Forest has got the football back. They've got a 3-0 lead on Virginia Tech. Logan Thomas is the reigning ACC Offensive Back of the Week, but how about these other passing leaders? Taj Boyd of Clemson, Tanner Price of Wake, Sean Renfrey of the Blue Devils of Duke, and Mike Glennon from North Carolina State. All great quarterbacks, and I tell you what, Tanner Price, he is really mobile, more than people give him credit for. He keeps a lot of plays alive with his feet and then completes it with his arm. He's a good young quarterback. And just nowhere to go that time. Big time defensive play made by Luther Maddy. Maddy was able to just collect Pendergrass and throw him down like a rag doll back near the 20 yard line. I mean, he beat him to the point of attack. Just great penetration by Maddy. Blows through the Wake Forest offensive line and meets the running back in the backfield and makes sure Pendergrass wasn't going to get out of his grasp there. You know, the defensive coaches for Virginia Tech thought Maddie looked like he, had, he was dealing with a peg leg last week against Miami after suffering a high ankle sprain in their victory at Marshall. He looks pretty healthy to me. That's a loss of four, second and 14. Deep handoff again. Virginia Tech with the defense. Tariq Edwards. So right now for Bud Foster, he's got to be happy with those two plays. Well, yeah, I mean, Angela talked about the loss of some defense alignment up front, but you know what? In college football, you know, there's more scholarship players on the team. Players need to step up when people get hurt, and it looks like right now they're doing it. Price back to pass on third and long. Flushed from the pocket, still rolling. Now he's collected, and Edwards has got it back at the 10 yard line. A great job by Tariq Edwards there. Stayed with the play. Price couldn't get away from him. He had time initially. You're going to see the pocket breaks down. Price is going to roll to his left, left, but Tariq Edwards comes around the end and finishes him off with a sack. Wow, that series. Included a big message by Virginia Tech's defense. That was dominant. It was like they needed a series almost to wake up, Dave. 14-yard loss on the sack. Punt out to midfield. Taken a fair catch called for at the 50-yard line. And Virginia Tech will start this series just on the Wake Forest side of the 50-yard line at the 49. But, I mean, exactly what you want to do as a defense. It, what a shutdown series that was. Wake Forest actually went backwards there. Most wins since 2005 in college football. You're going to find Virginia Tech amongst the leaders. Boise State leads this category, followed by Florida, TCU, and Virginia Tech with 68 wins. Ties LSU in that category. Most victories since 2005. One of the best programs in the country, no doubt. Here's Thomas. Quick shot, pass is completed to the 44-yard line. Nice pass and catch to Danny Cole. Let's take a look at that Wake Forest defense. Herman Doherty, Whitlock, who's really had a nice year so far at the nose guard spot, and Zach Thompson. Wilbur, Petros, and Haynes, the linebackers. Noel on one corner, Okoro on the other. They have outstanding corners. Bush and Quarles, your safeties tonight for Wake. Second down and five out of the power eye for Virginia Tech. Logan Thomas changing the play. Going back to pass. 
He may have changed the play, but not everybody was on the same page. Incomplete, it'll be third down and five. Yeah, big down for the late defense here. You, know, you just went through him. You know, keep an eye on number five, Kyle Corals. He's a great strong safety that was all over the field last week. We haven't called him yet, but we'll be calling his name tonight, I'm sure. Well, you didn't see too many incomplete passes from Logan Thomas last week. 23 of 25 against Miami for 310 yards, three touchdowns, and those two incomplete passes. One pass was dropped, another was thrown away. So third and five. Blitz coming. Thomas steps up. Throws. Incomplete, a dangerous pass. It could have been a pick six. Marcus Davis was the intended receiver. Yeah, good, de good defense by Wake. You're going to see they're going to be in a cover two with two safeties in the middle of the field. They go man to man across the front with the receivers and just shut down coverage. Thomas steps up, and as Dave said, almost could have been intercepted, but throws it away. But great defense there. I love the scheme with the two deep, the cover two, and the man to man across the front. Great job by the Wake defense. Right, so here's Brant over on for his second punt of the opening period. And Jackson is back to receive it. Punting the football has been a nightmare this season for both these teams, and this is a shake. And it'll take a Wake Forest bounce and will not go inside the 20-yard line. So Wake Forest will start first and 10 from the 21. I think you gave the uh, uh, announcer jinx there, Dave. <laughs> That's a 24-yard punt. 6.59 to go in our opening period. Wake's got the ball back and a 3-0 lead. Wake Forest has a 3-0 lead on Virginia Tech. Demon Deacons have the football. Let's send it down to Angel Mount. Thanks, Dave. Josh Harris, Chris Givens, and Tanner Price. These are all players from the state of Texas. You know, it's a hotbed for college football players. When we talked to Coach Gro uh, Grove, he said, I'm not afraid to recruit these guys who have had ACL tears, and all three of these guys have. He goes, we expect our kids to develop their junior year and play their best football, so I'm not scared of an ACL, and I'll go recruit that kid. Yeah, good point. That's worked out. Here's Price. Right down the scene, Gibbons has got it. Hit him in stride inside the 30, 20. Touchdown, Demon Deacons. He's making us look like a genius early. Yeah, absolutely. He's a big playmaker. It was just a deep post pattern. Tanner Price shows you his arm strength, and Gibbons outruns the defensive secondary for a great score. Newman with the kick up, and it's good. He had one blocked last week in their victory here at home against Florida State, but that was up and through 10 0 Wake. Yeah, again, it all starts with up front and good protection. And you see Gibbons, he's three steps behind the defender there. Hosley for Virginia Tech, and you're not going to catch Givens, who's, who could be the fastest receiver in the ACC. All right, so Givens now has a receiving touchdown in four consecutive games for Wake Forest. And I can't say enough about this Wake Forest offensive line. It all starts up there with time, and you hear Givens and you see him run. Boy, he has some speed. That's what you call an efficient scoring drive. Very efficient. I, I couldn't even talk about Angela's story. You know, I'm one of those guys. I blew my ACL in high school. I don't know where Jim Grobe was when I got hurt, though. Well, the early points here in Winston-Salem and the Demon Deacons fans rocking. Demon Deacons. They've only trailed five and a half minutes through their first five games. They've scored first in every game. A good look at Tony Gregory, who's also back to return kicks. Taken at the 16 yard line by Wilson across the 20. And up to the 25. Gibbons now, he's knocking down quite the streaks. He's got a catch in 21 straight games now for Wake. 
Yeah, I mean, outstanding receiver. And Virginia Tech knows Gibbons is going to be the number one target, so they're going to have to do something to try to shut him down as this game progresses. Let's see what Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator for Virginia Tech, has in mind now that the Hokies are trailing on the road 10 0. Yeah, we haven't seen Logan Thomas run the ball at all. You know, that belly read, that zone read that he's so good at. You know, we'll see if he does it this series at all. One back set. Boykin comes in motion. We keep this on the ground. To the 27 yard line. Josh Oglesby, his first carry, redshirt senior from Garner, North Carolina. Really didn't have a lot of room. Noel brought him down. A gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. And the thing you'll see tonight out of these corners from Wake Forest, Noel and Acora, boy, they come up and they like to make tackles. They will stick their nose in there uh, where normal cornerbacks won't. But let's watch that later in the game because sometimes when you stick your nose in there as a corner, you end up getting beat later in the game. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as the game goes. Virginia Tech scuffling around on offense so far tonight. Second down and nine. The run again. And again, not much. A loss of a yard. Oglesby brought down by Whitlock. And you're just going to see the speed of the Wake Forest defense. They get off the ball. There's Noel again in the backfield. And then Whitlock gets off his block. And you see the gang tackling. When you see a Virginia Tech player get tackled tonight, you will see four or five black helmets around the ball. How about the key to Whitlock coming over to make the stop from his nose guard position? Third and a long 10. Thomas, the protection is good. He shows off that big arm. Incomplete. Trying to go to Marcus Davis again. And Kenny Okoro's had a strong game on the corner so far tonight. Yeah, I mean, this game has started out uh, just as Wake Forest would want it to. I mean, it's been great. They've been great on defense, getting drives. And, and again, Thomas is going to show you his arm. He gets hit after the throw. But very good coverage by Kenny Okoro. Brandhover set to punt it away. Lavelle Jackson. A line drive kick, a good return opportunity for Jackson. And great special teams playing. A flag comes in. Did you say a flag, Dave? <laughs> yeah, multiple flags. <laughs> Tom McCreesh is our referee tonight. And now they'll get together and make sure they all saw the same thing correctly. Going to return, return. Illegal block in the back. Number 21 in the receiving team. 10 yards for his final foul. foul. First down. Usually when you block the guy in the back and you actually knock him into the returner, everyone's going to see that because that's where all the eyes are. So you saw all the flags around on the same call. I forgot about the good field position for Wake. This will be marked off. It's our first penalty of the game. What a crazy year it's been in the ACC already, particularly in the Atlantic. Clemson and Wake have rushed out. They're undefeated. Florida State virtually out of the race. Pick to win it. Yeah, absolutely. Price. Pendergrass. Oh, he was one step away from taking it to the house. Out to the 36-yard line. Yeah, and I love this. Just a little zone belly read. Price gets it right in there. Pendergrass, nice hole. He's a north-south guy. He gets up there and, and positive yards. You know, Wake is running. Their offense is, is really flawless to this point. From the pistol on first down at their own 36. Pendergrass again tries the right side. It'll be a gain of two out to the 38-yard line. Good pursuit that time by the Hokie defense. Yeah, very good defense by Virginia Tech. You know, they had Wake Forest went with a pistol set there, and they did the stretch play. What that stretch play, stretch play, excuse me, is designed to do is give that running back options. Good Pendergrass to cut it, cut it up. You can bounce it out. You can just keep it straight play side. But Virginia Tech did a good job stringing along down the line of scrimmage, getting penetration, and stopping it for only a two-yard gain. That's Bruce Taylor with the tackle for the Hokies. 
Wake Forest with an early edge on Virginia Tech in the first downs. Demon Deacons with six. Hokies still looking for their first of the night. Price on the rollout. Stops. Fires. Incomplete at the 49-yard line. Fans wanted a flag. That one isn't coming. It just looked like it was good defense. Dembry was the intended receiver. Yeah, I thought it was a good note call here. As you see the quarterback, Price, roll out, sets himself a little high on the pass, and yeah, that's a, that's a good no call. The defender gets there right as the ball passes. Exum on the coverage. Third down and eight. Here comes the blitz for the Hokies. And they swarm under Price. Second sack of the night for Virginia Tech. Exum led the charge. Yeah, they send the free safety there. Exum right up the middle. No one picks him up and they get a second. I think that's what Virginia Tech has to do. As you see, they sent everyone there, including the linebacker, Bruce Taylor, and they just had too many defenders for Wake Forest to block there. And, and you can see defensive coordinator Bud Foster changing up, throwing those blitzes in there because they got to slow down the Wake Forest offense, and they did do it there. Dual safeties back for the Hokies. Wolfack. Sends the punt back to the 24-yard line. Cole trying to get wide. And he's brought down at the 35-yard line. Wake Forest, their defense has really tightened up this season. Gardner-Webb only 139 yards. Only one touchdown surrendered to BC. And they forced five turnovers, four interceptions, and one fumble last week against Virginia uh, against Florida State. First and ten. You can see the Hokies have had their way with their opponents in the opening period. One broken tackle. Boykin makes the catch and takes it to the 41 yard line. That's a gain of five. It'll be second down and five. Yeah, this is one of those quick bubble screens on that one, though. Your partner out there, your, your fellow receiver, needs to block for you, or else that play usually gets blown up. Danny Cole had the block. But Coral did a good job getting off it and limiting that to a five yard gain. Tech still looking for their first first down of the night. Second down and five. Ball with their own 41. So Wilson takes it down to the 44-yard line. And sets up third down and two. Mike Olson made the stop for Wake Forest. Yeah, big down here. You know, I wouldn't be surprised with Logan Thomas if they get him in the shotgun and give him a chance to do one of those replays where he can keep it himself. You know, when that quarterback is a good runner, as good as Thomas, it's almost like having a 12th offensive player out there when you can run as well as Thomas. Deep handoff. Not happening. Trying to go to the right side, and the Demon Deacons were waiting on Virginia Tech. And when you have a defense as, face, as fast as Wake, and you line up in the eye, I think you limit yourself, Dave. I really do. When you have a 250-pound quarterback, boy, I really would love to put him in the shotgun and let him do that belly replay. We, we've seen him do it, and we're going to take a look at it here. And, boy, watch Wake Forest get off the ball, win the point of attack on the line of scrimmage, and they tackle the, the offensive carrier in the backfield. Brandover's third punt the opening period that's a bomb great punt into the end zone so it's a touchback it'll come back out to the 20 yard line and Wake Forest is unique in the respect Greeny that they go with co-defensive coordinators Tim Billings and Brian Moore that's a 58 yard punt in return 38 yard net the thing that's interesting, I think, about the co-defensive coordinators, Dave, is both of those guys, Billings and North, they've both been head coaches before in their career. Billings at Southeast Missouri State, and Nor was a head coach at Ohio before, and I think that brings a lot to it, uh, having two head coaches like that. Yeah, it's an interesting Former story. Former head coaches. Interesting story with Nor. When Jim Grove left Ohio University, he took the entire staff with him to Winston-Salem, except for Nor, who stayed behind and was the head coach.
Pendergrass. Trying to read his blocks, but really couldn't, couldn't get anything going, and the Hokies stop it for no gain. Second and ten. Down to the sidelines. What's up, Angel? Hey, Dave. When I talked to Tanner Price, he said, we're always overlooked. This is a team that has embraced that, and we use it as motivation to prove people wrong. He said, we're going to show the nation what kind of football team we are that we can compete, certainly in doing that this year. Thanks, Angela. We are inside a minute to go here in our opening period. Second and ten, Tanner Price out of the gun. Fires. Campanero makes the reception. Takes the ball near the 26-yard line. Campanero. I loved it in the notes. His quarterback rating is six, over 600. Three for three with two touchdown passes. Threw a touchdown last week against Florida State. And I wouldn't exactly say his fellow receivers were open. That's one of those things. Just yeah. throw it to me. Make sure you throw it to me. I'll catch it. <laughs> Still looking for a first third down conversion of the game from either team. Wake Forest with the edge of total yards here in the opening period. 137 to 8. Chris Price. Givens breaks one tackle. And goes forward for maybe a yard. But we stopped four yards shy of the marker. And Wake Forest is going to have to punt the football. We've come to the end of our opening period. Rocking and rolling in Winston-Salem tonight. Demon Deacons of Wake Forest looking to beat Virginia Tech at home for the first time since 1970. The last time that Virginia Tech lost a game here in Winston-Salem. Frank Beamer was in his second year as an assistant at Radford High School. 10-0, Wake, after one. Wake Forest 10, Virginia Tech nothing as we set to begin our second period of play. Really take a look at how much support there is here tonight for Tech. I mean, that is the part of the field where the band is located for Virginia Tech. And there's an awful lot of maroon and orange down in that corner. Oh, yeah, you can see it. They're one of the best programs in the country we talked about, but their fans obviously travel really well. Um, it's just, it speaks tremendous for what a great program they are. Wolfeck, a good kick. Fair catch called for by Cole back at the 30 yard line. So Virginia Tech going to try to get something going offensively. Yeah, and I really think it begins with Logan Thomas. You know, I've said it a few times. I think you got to get him going. I think as the quarterback, he's going to be your leader. And I think if you can get him running the ball, loosen him up a little bit, get that blood flow, and he'll start completing a few passes. Frank Beamer looking for some answers over on the sideline. Virginia Tech was outrushed by Miami last week, 236 to 172. After the opening period, Pokies minus two rushing the football. Thomas, blitz coming. Big arm, barely picked off at the 35 yard line. Noel nearly got that one, and if he picked it off, that's probably six. Well, you're going to see the receiver, Marcus Davis, running out, and I tell you what, Logan Thomas does not look anywhere else but to Marcus Davis, and when you zone in on a receiver like that, a good defensive back like Noel is going to jump that route, and more times than not, he's going to pick it off, and if you pick one off out there, it's usually a pick six. And Bud Noel nearly got that. Second down and ten. And here's Thomas's first keeper. He spins his way up near the 34-yard line. That's a gain of four, and we need third down and six. It's interesting this week when we talked to the coaches from both teams. Tim Billings, the defensive coordinator for Wake Forest, was the primary recruiter for Logan Thomas, and uh, they really thought they had a good shot to get him here in Winston-Salem. Yeah, he's a good kid. He's versatile. He can play a bunch of different positions, but he's settled in quite nicely as a quarterback. All right, Tech looking for their first third down conversion of the night. Drager in motion. Here's Thomas. Picks out his receiver. 
And it's a catch for a first down up at the 43 yard line. First first down of the night, Jared Boykin, the senior, with a sure handed grab. I mean, he's their all time leading receiver. If you're going to throw it to anyone, throw it to Boykin. You're going to see him. He's just going to run. They're going to run a crossing route. You saw the other receiver cross on top. Thomas does a good job, gets it to Boykin where he can make a nice catch with his hands, turns it upfield, holds on to the ball after the hit, and a big first down for Tech there. Boykin is at the top of your screen now. Marcus Davis at the bottom, first and ten. Puck fake. Thomas going long. Trying to hook up with Boykin again inside the 20-yard line. Incomplete. And he had him, and you just saw that was just a little flick of the wrist by Logan Thomas. So you're going to see it. He does a good job. He's looking to the left. He comes back to Boykin. That's why Boykin was so wide open. But that little flick of the wrist, he just couldn't get it to him in stride. But Boykin was open. Well, was beaten on the play. And, and it was a smart play by Thomas because he started to the left. He scanned the field. He went through his read, his progressions, which allowed Boykin to get open. He just got to try to complete the pass. Saw a brief glimpse there a moment ago of Brian Knorr, the co-defensive coordinator for Wake Forest. He is down on the field. Tim Billings, the other co-defensive coordinator, is up in the box. Wilson falls forward near the 48-yard line. Another third down coming for Tech. And Wilson's another one they want to try to get going. He has nearly 800 yards rushing on the year. Billings in the middle right now. successful with those crossing routes those shallow crosses look for tech to try to get a receiver just running across the middle nice shallow cross about a six yard gain to try to pick this first down up and they are winding the clock the play clock down to five Thomas looking to throw again giving ground Cox fires and that pass is incomplete. It was intended for Cole inside the 25 yard line. Good job by Cole there. They did exactly what I thought. Cole ran a shallow cross, but they covered it. Scramble rules in effect. When you're a shallow receiver and your quarterback starts scrambling, you go long. That's exactly what Cole did. He broke off the route. He had it, had it in his hands. We thought he was going to come down with the catch, but a good job by the Wake defender to break it up. Jackson, a fair catch at the 15 yard line. 12.32 to go in our opening half from Winston Salem. Wake Forest looking for their fifth consecutive victory on the campaign. They lead 19th ranked Virginia Tech 10 0. great thing they did last week they had five takeaways but themselves on offense zero turnovers you know when you can take the ball away from your opponent and protect it on your own you're usually going to win the ball game Tanner Price fakes at the Pendergrass comes the rush again he's sacked third sack of the first half Virginia Tech getting after the passer that's Tyrell Wilson yeah, and this one's on Price. He's got a lot of time to throw. Virginia Tech does a good job covering the receivers, but Price has to get rid of that ball. You can't take a sack down there. Now you're down by your five-yard line. Tyra Wilson is giving up over 100 pounds to the right tackle, Doug Weaver. Gets the sack. Pendergrass going forward out to the 15-yard line. Back near the original line of scrimmage, it'll be third down and 10. 
Tyra Wilson, a Richard sophomore from Hampton. 6'1, 219. That's awfully light for a defensive end, but you know, folks around the Hokies remember that Corey Moore was an All-American at that same position at around 210 pounds. Absolutely. You know, at 220, I'm sure he's a strong kid. He, that ball came up as his career goes on, but he's got a good motor. We just saw it there. Third down and 10. Corner blitz coming. Price salutes it, throws incomplete. Up to the 25-yard line. It would have been a first down. Yeah, I talked about it before. Price is, is really mobile. He's got great feet. You called it the corner blitz came. Price saw it, and he sidesteps it. We're going to take a look here. Pettigrass steps up to get the other blitz. He misses it. Price does a good job sidestepping the corner blitz. Just cannot complete the pass, but does a good job to avoid the sack. Hey, no harm, no foul. Punt it out of there. Danny Cole. Sean Jarrett back to receive the kick. Wolfeck. Ooh, that's a bomb. Drives Cole all the way back to the 36 yard line. And a good special teams hit at the 40. Olsen with a big hit. Yeah, and we know, obviously, Beamer Ball, how, how great Virginia Tech special teams are. But I tell you what, Jim Grove. And Wake Forest, they play some good special teams themselves. That's a great little game within the game tonight. These two special teams units going at each other. So Tech with good field position. Looking for their first points of the night to start this drive from their own 40. Takes it down near the 43 yard line. He's second down and seven. Now, it be a bigger back, 5'11, 218. Likes to pound it in there between the tackles. He's got 44 carries on the year. That was a 49 yard punt for Wolfick. That's his career best. Territory down to the 44. Yeah, great screenplay. And, and this is what you do, guys, against teams that are fast and aggressive. You run screens and draws. It's the first screen of the night. I'm sure we're going to see some other ones. And you get it to your playmaker, Wilson, and let him turn it up for a big game. Biggest play for Virginia Tech thus far tonight. And this, this might be the play that gets him going. It's a 12 yard game. Sides. Now Cole comes in motion. Marcus Davis at the top of your screen. And off inside, down near the 41 yard line. So he's going to get about three, and he's second down and seven. Kind of a scary exchange here. Yeah, we're going to see it. This is that the belly read. Yeah, and, and, and that's, you know, Thomas has the option there to pull it out and keep it himself or give it to the back. Sometimes you get caught in between thoughts and you end up getting a fumble, but luckily for Tech, he gets it in there and no fumble. Beamer looking on. Here's Logan Thomas. Throwing for Boykin. He's got it inside the five, stretching for the pylon. Out of bounds, shy of the goal line, but it's going to be first and goal for Tech at the one. What a great pass by Logan Thomas there. High into the outside, that fade route where only Boykin could catch the ball. Does a nice job, steps up and throws just a beautiful pass where only his guy Boykin's gonna catch it or no one else and down at the one. 39 yard gainer. Rolling on the field as the player was out of bounds before crossing the goal line. The previous play is under review. Well, it's close. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the problem. It has to be indisputable. We know that. Boykin did a great thing there, and I don't even think he knew he was doing it. The ball was in his left hand, and you're going to see it as he swings that left hand around. It actually crosses the pylon 
inside the end zone. However, his foot touches out of bounds at relatively the same time. You're going to see it. There's the ball, and there's his foot. The problem is with that angle, I just don't think it's enough, Dave, to overturn the call on the field. I think it's going to be first and goal at the one. But, you know, it would, if it went the other way, if it was a touchdown first, they would probably not have been able to be overturned as well, well that, that way. That's a good indication of the, those huge hands by Boykin. He's got those triple X gloves. He's holding that thing like a grapefruit. But, you know, normally you don't want your receiver or your ball carrier to stick a ball like that. But when you have big mitts like that and you're by the goal line, that's exactly what you want to do. It's where the ball is. Get it inside that pylon. Well, how nice is it for Logan Thomas that he steps into a situation where the top two all-time leaders in Virginia Tech receptions are out there available to him in, in Boykin and Danny Cole. Yeah, and can't say enough about that pass by Logan Thomas where he put it on the money right where he needed to put that back, fade, back shoulder fade. And I wouldn't want to be the replay official on this one. Yeah, this is a close call, but I just don't think there's enough there to overturn it. But I've been wrong before. I just ask my wife. There are the replay review announcements based on indisputable video evidence. Call reversed or confirmed or the play stands. And we're waiting. Yeah, and when you hear him say call confirmed, that means 100% they were sure the call they got on the field was correct by replay. If it sa says it stands, it just means they did not have enough evidence to overturn it. And they're obviously taking a long look at it. Here's the call. After review, the rolling on the field stands as called. The ball is out of bounds at the one half yard line. First down. And I think it's the correct call. Um, just not enough to overturn it there. Good call by the officials. They took their time. That's what you want to see out of the replay booth uh, and, and the head referee there. And I think it was the right call. Against this Wake Forest defense, this is just the 16th time all season that the opposing team has been in the red zone. Power eye formation. Thomas leans forward. No signal yet. Touchdown, Tech. Yeah, good play call there by Brian Steinspring. You know, when you have a quarterback that big and that strong, you're going to see him. He gets down low. I like how he gets low and really surges with that offensive line up front behind Ozo Miller, and he gets in there and scores the touchdown. Good job by Virginia Tech. Five plays, 60 yards. In 2:22, Logan Thomas covered the final half yard. The extra point is up and good. In Virginia Tech, favorite in this game by about a touchdown is back in the game with their first touchdown. 8:43 to go until halftime. Wait, leads Virginia Tech 10-7, but the Hokies are on the board. Logan Thomas, a one-yard touchdown run. Keep playing the drive. A 39-yard pass to Jared Boykin that took it down inside the one-yard line. And so Virginia Tech now 10-7. They trail by three to Wake Forest. It was a great drive by Tech. Just what they needed to get back in the game. And it all hinged on Logan Thomas and had a great series. High short kick. Noel will watch that one sail out of bounds at the 10-yard line. And for Justin Meyer, that's the first kickoff he's had go out of bounds all season. Yeah, that's like the cardinal sin for a kicker. Free kick out of bounds. Ball twice at the 40-yard line. First down. Yeah, that's a momentum kick. Well, and Frank Beamer's not going to be happy about that. We know what a guru he is on special teams. And you just, as a kicker, you know, that was a high, short kick. They do that on purpose. They kick those high ones down to about the 10 or 15 to give the coverage team time to get down there. But you just can't miss it that far right and kick it out of bounds like that. It's a killer. Uh, Frank Beamer knows the importance of special teams. You can see his frustration with that. Get a very interesting point about special teams practice. We'll get back to that in just a second. First and 10 for Wake Forest from their own 40. Price with a handoff to Pendergrass. And he spins his way forward out near midfield for a gain of 40. And we talked to Frank Beamer earlier this week about 
special teams and being strong on special teams. He mentioned to us that he doesn't wait until the end of practice to do special teams. They have their special teams time allotted for the middle of their workouts to make sure that they get that, that work done in every practice. Well, and, and he said it makes the kids know how important it is. It's not before practice, not the end. It's a part of practice because it's a big part of the ball game. Second down, Price, quick shot, pass complete to Gibbons. And he is driven out of bounds at the 48-yard line. So it'll be third down and two. Wake Forest trying to get that momentum back. Wake still looking for their first third down conversion. Price. Quarterback keeper, and from our vantage point, it looks like it's going to be a, about a full yard shy of the marker. Yeah, I think they gave him a bad spot there, to be honest with you, but I think he's still going to be short, Dave, because we had a great look at it straight down the 50 from where our booth is. Definitely going to be short. And, and this is that belly read. He has the, the option to give it to the back or keep it himself, and he keeps it himself, and he definitely comes up short. Wilson with another big play. And for what it's worth, it was the right read by Tanner Price, but there's your difference when you have a 200-pound quarterback, then when Logan Thomas runs that play at 250, he can usually run that defender over and pick up the first down. Play game, offense. Five-yard penalty, remains sports out. Five-yard five -yard mark off against Wake. Alex Wolfeck is the punter for Wake Forest. He is one of eight Jacksonville natives on this Wake Forest roster. First penalty of the night on Jim Groves, Demon Deacons. Well, they obviously have a nice little pipeline down there to Jacksonville. Danny Cole is back to receive this kick at the 16 yard line. Wolfeck rolling. Drive kick that Cole will feel at the 12. And he brings it back out to the 20 yard line. And so Tech has got the ball back. Now trailing 10 7. 6.51 to go till halftime. Wake Forest leads Virginia Tech 10 7. Force 10, Virginia Tech 7. Just under seven minutes to go until halftime. Virginia Tech drive summary. Pretty ugly stuff. First five drives, but last time they had the football, they clicked a 60-yard touchdown drive that culminated with a Logan Thomas one-yard touchdown run. Key play in the drive, a 39-yard reception to wide receiver Jared Boykin, who took it down inside the one-yard line. First and 10 for Tech at their own 20. Get something going on the ground. Out near the 26-yard line goes David Wilson. Now, Wilson has rushed for over 100 yards in every game this year for Tech except Arkansas State. But he has only scored two touchdowns in the last five games. And that's the exact play I think they need to start running. Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator, that the shotgun zone replay where Thomas can either give it to Wilson or keep it himself. I think that's going to be a productive play for them tonight. Here comes Wilson again. Well, he is so dangerous. I mean, he has legit 4-3 speed. Well, what I love about Wilson is he can explode through the line of scrimmage. We're going to watch it here. It's just a, a off tackle right. And watch right here. He has another gear. If he breaks that tackle, he's going to split those defenders. But boy, he really has another gear through the hole. And not a lot of backs have that. Averaging just under 128 all-purpose yards a game. Has had some very big games. Season opener ran for 162 yards and three touchdowns against Appalachia. It's a first down for Tech. Steady diet. Wilson again. And right now, that offensive line for Virginia Tech is firing out. Yeah, it's a big offensive line, very experienced, 128 combined career starts. And you're going to see they just. Catch the wake D with an inside stun and open the hole up off tackle left. 
And Wilson hits it hard now, Miller, for seven yards. Yeah, Miller and Nosal just opened up a huge gap. And Wilson, who's a track star, was like shot right out of the block. Here he comes again, trying to get Rodney. You know, he's got the speed to do so. He turns the corner. He's got midfield and more. Breaks one tackle, still on his feet, all the way down to the 20-yard line of Wake Forest. That, in a nutshell, is everything that's so dangerous about David Wilson. He yeah, turned the corner and then tiptoed down the sideline. That's the first toss sweep we've seen tonight, and Virginia Tech does a great job blocking on the perimeter, letting Wilson get down the sideline, and you see an uncharacteristic by Kyle Corals tries to knock him out of bounds, but Wilson's strong enough to stay in bounds, stay on his feet, and pick up extra yardage. You know, you got to wrap guys up on the side, and you can't throw shoulders into good backs because they'll keep running. Power eye. Thomas fires inside the five. Boykin stretches out. Touchdown, Tech. Throws a strike. Don't play action. Steps up. And he hits Boykin on the slap pattern again with those big hands and that ball extended. He reaches across the goal line. I'm going to tell you though, Dave, his knee looked like it might have been down and we were probably going to get another review. All right, this is ruled on the field as a 20-yard touchdown catch. Yeah, take a look at it. The strike by Thomas. Nice catch by Boykin. He's going to reach out. Let's look at that right knee. And it's close. The knee definitely hits the ground. The question is, did the ball break the plane of the goal line before that knee hit? The knee's down there. The question is, is the ball across the plane? Now, the line judge called it a touchdown on the field. And I think it's going to go back to exactly the last review we had, which incidentally was with Boykin, that I just don't think it's indisputable. This is our best look. We're going to get the reach. There's the reach. There's the knee down. But the call in the field was a touchdown. I believe it's going to stand. We know we get in trouble when we try to guess these things. I think that's a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be any fun if we didn't no, try to guess it. That's right. Going to take a look at it. Officials getting his money's worth tonight up there. After review, the rolling on the field stands is called touchdown. And notice they didn't say confirm, they said stand, which means there was just nothing there to overturn. What you see in this drive for Virginia Tech, two back to back super athletic players. Wilson, what a great run that was, and then Boykin able to stretch that ball out beyond the goal line with the touchdown catch. That puts Virginia Tech in the lead. Point after is going, it's 14-10. So Tech has got their first lead of the night. We've had our share of big plays tonight. Well, and you talked about it, boy. You can look at him, four receptions, 73 yards in the touchdown. Uh, he's just a great rider. See, what a luxury for Logan Thomas to have. Jared Boykin. Look at the receivers that are on the field for Virginia Tech. A couple of vets who... Been through the wars and back in Boykin and Danny Cole. And you love Cole. He's like one of those little the underneath receiver. Runs a lot of those shallow routes. Is a tough guy. Runs good routes. Catches the ball. But Boykin, you know, he's got that deep threat ability to beat the defenders deep. And both of them, I mean, just look at the production between the two of them combined. Four. 14-10, Virginia Tech has got the lead, and their fans who are sitting on their hands got something to cheer about. Now, it would behoove Justin Meyer to keep this kickoff in bounds. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. If he wants to keep kicking off, yeah, that's a good idea. Noel and Jackson back to receive it for Wade. three-yard line. This is Jackson. Jackson is across the 20. 
Out beyond the 30 to the 32-yard line. Let's send it down to Angela for an injury update. Thanks, Dave. You're going to want to keep an eye out for Garrick Williams, number 74, the center for Wake Forest. He came out the first series with a tweaked right ankle. They taped it this last series. They put three rounds of tape on the outside of his shoe. Also, number 80, Andrew Parker, the tight end. He is out until they have. He also has a right ankle injury that they will look at during halftime, Dave. All right, Angela, thank you. So Williams is watching, and Chance Reigns is in the game. At center now for Wake. Price, the lefty. Trying to thread the needle in traffic. A dangerous pass intended for Gibbons. And the ball was knocked down by Eddie Whitley. Yeah, nice job by Whitley there. The strong safety. He's in zone coverage. Just reading the quarterback's eye, Tanner Price. He does a good job to knock it away. Some of those yards that were coming fairly easily on the first possession of the night. For Wake Forest, not so much now. Wake trying to battle back after Virginia Tech has grabbed momentum here. Tech trailed 10 0, now leads 14 10. Pendergrass tripped up. And that's Derek Hopkins, the sophomore from Highland Springs. Yeah, big defensive tackle, 300 pounds, and good penetration. It's one thing about these defensive linemen these days. They're big and they're fast. They're great with their arms. They can shed blocks, get penetration, and make plays. That's a great play by Hopkins there. Third and ten. Tech showing blitz. Step out of it, rushing only four. Here's Price. Throwing on the run, incomplete. doesn't matter if that front floor for Virginia Tech isn't healthy right now. They're collapsing the pocket. Well, that was great penetration by the front four there. When you can get pressure on the quarterback without having to send any blitzes, you're going to see just the front four. They run a stunt, and they just collapse the pocket. And when you can do that just with your front four, boy, you got a lot of guys in coverage, and they, they had the uh, weight receivers covered like a blanket there. Bud Foster likes that. Inside of four minutes to go. Wolfing. And that one is going to take initially a roll for Wake Forest. And is marked down at the 29 yard line. Virginia Tech, you can call them Road Warriors. This graphic backs that up. They have the longest active road winning streak in FBS. Followed by Oregon, Oklahoma State, and Stanford. Virginia Tech, the only team in the nation right now with a road winning streak in double digits at 10. And that's a great streak. That shows you what a quality program they are. That is, that's tough to do. Wilson. Spins forward near the 32-yard line. That'll be a gain of three. Yeah, I mean, Tech looks like, you know, it took a little while to get into this game, but they're getting in their rhythm. It's going on the last two drives. We'll see what they do in this one, but good start. Picked up a few yards on first down. Another one of those Jacksonville natives on the Wake roster, Scott Vitros, the middle linebacker, made the stop. Stretching out near the first down marker. Looks like he's a little bit short. Boy, Kenny Acora was out on an eye. Well, I was just going to say, you read my mind. They're playing with fire there because it was one on one. Acora, Boykin. Boykin spins out of that tackle by Acora. He's gone. I mean, so you're exactly right. I like the recognition by Tech to see that. Third and a yard. Thomas really depends on when the whistle was blown. The linesman. Has his forward progress at the 40. And if that's where they mark the football, it's a first down. It is a first down. And, and Thomas did exactly what you should do. Just keep going. Even when you hear a whistle like that, roll off the pile. And he's so big, he falls forward and picks up the first down. And, and he just, it's a second up, but he rolls off the uh, pile there and picks up the first down easily. Blitz coming for Wake. Hokies pick it up. Thomas still 
with the football now finally drive down a sack back at the 25 yard line Justin Jackson And this is your inexperience from Logan Thomas. I mean, he's got all day to throw it. You just cannot take a sack in this situation. Throw the ball out of bounds. You're in the, you're out of the pocket. Excuse me. You're, you're flushed out. Just throw it out of bounds past the line of scrimmage. You will not be, get called for grounding in that situation. So Virginia Tech wants a timeout here, and for Justin Jackson, that's his first sack of the year. And it really comes at an opportune time for the Demon Deacons. Well, yeah, I mean, and it's a 14-yard loss. Not only a sack, but a 14-yard sack. Just a great job by Wake Forest. But again, I can't say enough. Logan Thomas, your arm is super strong. You're not going to have a problem getting it out of bounds past the line of scrimmage. So I'm just chuck that thing out of there. Coming up at halftime. First half stats and highlights. A look at LSU's sensational defensive back. Taran Matthew and will go all access with Virginia Tech. That is coming up at halftime. Just over two minutes to go until the half. Virginia Tech with two timeouts remaining. Wake have all three of theirs in their pocket. Second down at 26. You got a call for second and 26 there? I personally don't. We'll see if Brian Steinspring does. Thomas on a quarterback keeper. Breaks one tackle. Trying to get to the outside. Beyond the 40. All the way out to the 44-yard line. And that's what happens when you have a big physical back. It's a great call by Brian Stice. I mean, look, they don't pick up the first down, but they nearly do. You're going to see this is a called quarterback draw. He does a nice job. He secures the ball while getting into that body. Reads his block, and he's strong. He doesn't look to run out of bounds. He's carrying Irma in there from Wake Forest, and they got it back now to third and five. Very manageable down and distance. Uh, apparently that answers the question that Brian Steinspring did have a call for second and 26. Now much more manageable, third down and five. Tech two for seven on third down conversions in the first half. Blitz coming. Incomplete. And now a late flag comes in at the 47-yard line. Yeah, and I thought a flag might come in. Noel had his hands all over the receiver which was fine, but as soon as that ball got thrown, those hands better come off that receiver. They didn't, and they're going to catch him with a pass interference call. That's what they're talking about now. Was the ball in the air or was it not? Was it holding or was it pass interference? his arm on the receiver but you know what boy can push back off of the receiver so i wouldn't say their feet tangled up Dave, but they were both pushing each other so you know what pick the flag up and let's go on relatively penalty free first half two penalties on wake forest for 15 yards no penalties against the hokies tonight grant Hogan gets this one to turn over inside the 10 inside the five rolls dead at the four-yard line. Michael Brandover got virtually a standing ovation with his first punt last week against Miami. It was a 52-yarder. That's a 50-yard punt that goes dead at the four. And it shows you how important it is to have a good punter to try to pin your opponent back deep in their territory. He did a great job there. Let's check the drive chart for Wake Forest. Demon Deacons on offense started well. Took the opening kick, got a field goal. Givens had the 79-yard touchdown reception. And after that, not, not too much. That's a first down out to the 16-yard line. Brandon Pendergrass. And if you're wondering where Josh Harris is, he suffered a hamstring injury last week in their win over Florida State. He has not played tonight. Campanero reaches out, maybe giving forward progress, and they do out to the 21-yard line. 
We got an injury update from Angela. What's up? That's right, Dave. Quarterback Jerron Hosley went out with a hamstring injury, and he will not return. Also, the punter for Virginia Tech, Michael Branover. It's his birthday. He's 19 years old today. Nice. Blitz coming. Price incomplete. Third down. Price has to be careful with 37 seconds up. You cannot state the obvious here. I know you cannot throw a pick, cannot have a turnover in your own end with 37 seconds left in the half. Can we go into the hurry up here? Not allowing the Hokies to get different defensive personnel on the field. Pass is intercepted. Tariq Edwards. the interception at the 27 yard line away you know I hate to jinx him Dave but I've called too many games this year where I've seen quarterbacks throw turnovers costly late in a half to give the other team points now he gets hit you know the pocket collapsed on the ball pops up in the air and Virginia Tech does a good job of picking it off but you see the rush his arm definitely gets hit there by the Virginia Tech defender J.R. Collins and hey Tech's in business with 30 seconds left in the half. Well, Tech didn't have an interception last week, and that broke a long streak. Now they have one to start a new streak. To the end zone, Boykin stretched out, couldn't pull it in. And for Price, that was just his third interception of the year. And, and the Wake defense has to step up here and keep them out, try to limit them to a field goal, or at least even a field goal attempt. Nothing says they'll make it. But you just you don't want to give up points late in a half like this, especially when they're unforced. Yeah, until last week's game with Miami, Virginia Tech had picked off at least one pass in 12 consecutive games. Didn't pick up one against the Canes, but start a new streak here tonight. Golden opportunity to add on here. Thomas throwing, pass is caught. It's Drager inside the five. It's first and goal for Tech. 15 seconds left in the half. And you see Drager, the big tight end, does a good job on the crossing route, catches the ball, breaks a tackle, and he's smelling the goal line. He gets close, comes up a little short. And Thomas has a lot of time, steps up. We have a timeout. Hits the tight end, and Drager knows what to do with the ball, just short of the end zone. All right, so Virginia Tech calls a timeout here. They have one left. Jim Grove is just going to be sick about that late interception. And now Virginia Tech knocking on the goal line with a chance to get another touchdown and grab the momentum and a double-digit lead as they head back to the locker room. And, and I know it wasn't Tanner Price's fault per se. He got hit on the play. But, boy, when you throw the ball late in the half, deep in your end, end, end of the field, boy, sometimes you're playing with fire when you're playing another good team. Sometimes it's better just to run the ball, see if your running back can't pop it through, pop a long one. Get it out towards midfield so you don't have to worry about it, boy. But when you're on your end of the field, you throw a turnover, you give the ball to your opponent in scoring position. And now look at Virginia Tech knocking on the door for a touchdown with 15 seconds left in the half. Logan Thomas is a one-yard touchdown run tonight. Heck, he caught a two-yard touchdown pass on these two teams at Lane Stadium last year. And with a timeout left, in, you know, I think they should run the ball. Thomas. Incomplete. Trying to go to Drager. And Bud Noel thinks he should have picked that one off. And he came close. He had very good coverage on Drager, the tight end. He couldn't pull it in, but did a good job defending the play. A little bit of talk this week about Drager maybe going back to the defensive line with all the injuries on that side of the football for Virginia Tech. But Frank Beamer likes his young guys and keeping Drager, the fifth year senior, at tight end. Ten seconds left. Hokies with one timeout. Wilson. Now check it. That's the keeper on the dive. It's Logan Thomas, his second rushing touchdown. And that's the play. I've been begging Brian Snipes to the run. That zone reach is low. Tom, Logan Thomas does it so well. And you're going to see he's going to fake it into the belly of Wilson. He reads the line, and he's just like a fullback in there, right up the gut. And I love the call with 10 seconds left, not afraid to run the ball. And Thomas gets it in the end zone for the big touchdown for Tech. 
was a great fake. The extra point is up and good. And that's a great sequence for Tech. Four plays, 26 yards in 26 seconds. Logan Thomas, the three-yard touchdown run, and it was set up by the interception by Edwards. Yeah, I mean, he runs that zone read so well. I just, boy, I wish they would have won more of that in the second half because I think they could be really productive against this real aggressive Wake defense. Now some of the stats still favoring. Wake Forest, but now Virginia Tech has got the edge in the total yards. And Wake Forest with that one big turnover. That is huge. And Tech leads in the biggest stat of them all, Dave. The score. Exactly. 21-10. Big L. One of the biggest, the tallest anyway, quarterbacks in FBS. Well, no, you hit it on the head, Dave. The interesting thing about that stat, he's tall, but he's a big quarterback. He's muscular. A lot of those other guys, we've seen Glennon a lot this year, more slender. But, boy, Thomas is a big kid. Could easily be a tight end. A very reserved young guy, quietly confident. Says he talks to his grandmother every other day. She calls him to remind him to pray. There you go. Meyer. Squib kick. Got to get on that football. And they do. Across the 30. Up near the 36-yard line. Jackson. And we've come to the end of the first half. The Hokies head back to the locker room with a little bit of spring in their step. And... They've scored 21 unanswered after trailing early 10-0. Our halftime activities are next. College football on ESPN3 sponsored by Sprint. And that's going to be a touchback to start the third quarter. Wilson did not opt to bring that out. Wilson had an effective... First half rushing the football, nine carries for 66 yards, 7.3 yards per carry. Brandon Pendergrass subbing for the injured Josh Harris tonight for Wake. 12 carries in the first half, 58 yards, 4.8 yards a carry. So after scoring 21 unanswered points, Virginia Tech begins their first possession of the third quarter at their own 20-yard line. Thomas able to get a flanker screen out to the 30-yard line. Marcus Davis, that's his first catch of the game. Yeah, and a nice job by Boykin blocking. We know what he can, we, he can do catching the ball, but does a nice job on that quick screen pass to Marcus Davis. Throws a nice block, and they got a great gain, nine-yard gain on first down. Thomas now 9 of 20 throwing the football. Boykin had five catches in the first half for 79 yards and a touchdown. Second and a yard. Fake to Wilson. Thomas. And he is going to be sacked. Well, that will go as a sack. Actually, it's going to be a first down. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he, Unbelievable. He, he is so strong, he should have been sacked. You're right, Dave. They had him behind the line of scrimmage, but he is so strong. Even when he's wrapped up, he just keeps moving forward. He keeps those legs going, that big body, and he ends up picking up two yards on the play. That's amazing. It looked like it was going to be a sack. Instead, he fell forward and got the first down at the 31-yard line. From 31 now, Logan Thomas. Swings the ball out, pass is caught, bumped out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And Danny Cole, fifth-year senior from Lexington, Virginia, makes the catch. And, of course, Danny Cole, really a productive receiver himself. And I like Ryan Steinsman coming out. They're getting, throwing those balls to the sideline, getting good blocking by their fellow wide receivers, and they're picking up great yardage on first down. It's a gain of nine for Cole. That's his second catch. Two catches for 14 yards tonight. Trips to the top. Four wide. Going to swing it through the other side to Cole. And Cole takes it out near the 49-yard line. 
So that's a first down. And it's the exact same play, just on the other side of the field. And the great thing here for the Virginia Tech offense is they're really stretching out, widening out that Wake Forest defense that was so aggressive early in this game. Now you're spreading them out, sideline to sideline. It's going to open up some gaps in the middle of the field. Well, it took Virginia Tech a while tonight to get their sea legs offensively. They had punted on their first five possessions tonight. Here's Thomas again. Well, he's confident in the pocket. Going long. Inside the 10 yard line. That pass is pulled in by Boykin. So another huge catch, his sixth of the night. It's first and goal for Tech at the seven. And that's great recognition by Boykin and Thomas. You're going to see the corner blitzes. You don't see it on that look. But a Coral blitzes. The strong safety quarrels has to come over. And it's a mismatch. He does not get over in time to break up the play. And Boykin goes up and makes a great catch. And Virginia Tech running downhill right now. That's a 44 yard gain. Yeah, and when you elect to blitz a corner like that, you've got one on one with a safety that has to come over from the middle of the field. And it's just a mismatch for Boykin. Handoff to Wilson. Breaks one tackle. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Start to the second half for Virginia Tech. Key to the drive, a 44 yard reception by Boykin. The extra point is up and good. And Virginia Tech has now scored 28 unanswered points. They have their largest lead of the game at 28 to 10. Wilson goes in for his first touchdown of the night, just his third in the last five games. Tech 28, Stephen Deeks 10. Twenty-eight ten, Virginia Tech has got the lead on Wake Forest. You know, we mentioned before the break how Virginia Tech had punted on their first five possessions. Since that point, they have scored touchdowns on four of their last five possessions. Yeah, and I love the way they're mixing the ball around to different receivers. Boykin, Danny Cole, and of course they're feeding David Wilson the ball. He's running the ball extremely well tonight. with the kickoff. And that'll go into the end zone. And a touchback, but Noel stays in. And Wake Forest will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. And important for Wake Forest to get something going on this first drive, Dave, to answer Virginia Tech. Really, since the beginning of the games, the Wake Forest offense has been quiet. Tanner Price in the first half, 8 of 17, one touchdown, one interception for 130 yards, including the 79 yard touchdown to Givens. He's been sacked three times. Out of the pistol again. Deep hand off to Pendergrass, and that's a tremendous play defensively by Virginia Tech. Alonzo Tweedy. Tweedy's an undersized linebacker, it, just barely 200 pounds, but he is fast. He can run, and he runs down Pendergrass there for the big TFL tackle for a loss in the backfield. And boy, the Virginia Tech defense is broken up as well. Now that whip linebacker position is normally the playmaking spot, or amongst the playmaking spots for the Hokies. Gavea Wilson out for the season. He sprained his right foot, stuffing that fake punt or fake field goal by Miami last week on their first possession. And here's Givens. He's got the first down. Or check it. He's back to the original line of scrimmage to the 21. It'll be third down and nine. So here's Tweedy. The redshirt junior from Hermitage High School over in Richmond. Had not played any defensive snaps since the season opener against Appalachia. Played very well last week. Career high eight tackles. He's off the field here. Blitz coming. Price. Crossing pattern complete. 
And Gibbons is tripped up at the 27 yard line. It's at, that is going to be shy of the first down. So Wake's going to have to put it. Yeah, great play by Dietrich Bonner, the cornerback there. We know how fast Gibbons is as he runs the cross here. Good job by Price to give him the ball. Usually Gibbons can run away, but a great job by the defensive back, Bonner, to make the tackle and not let Gibbons pick up the first down. And Bonner is subbing for the injured J. Ron. Mostly he was injured in the first half. It's a hamstring. Wolfick, the punt. Cole at the 30, and he has immediately swung under. So Virginia Tech's offense has become much, much more efficient. And we have a flag down. Holding number 23 in the return team. 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. That is the first penalty tonight against Virginia Tech. The Tech has not turned the ball over tonight. So essentially they've played virtually mistake free well, football. Yeah, really other than the sluggish starts where they had a punt a few times at the beginning, they've really uh, gotten into a nice rhythm, distributing the ball, spreading around and just playing quality offense. Swings it out to Cole. Cole dragged out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Zachary Allen, the outside linebacker, made the stop for Wake. And that's that bubble screen. I think that's the fifth time they've run it already. And you know what? They're going to keep running it until Wake can adjust and stop it. But they're picking up seven, eight, nine yards every time they run that play. Second down and three. Here's Wilson. Turns the play back inside. It looked like it was supposed to go around the end and then ducked it back inside. And he may have the first down at the 30. Yeah, and I like Wilson. I mean, he's a very experienced runner, the junior from Danville, Virginia. He, he's just a smart running back. He gets the ball there. He doesn't bounce it where you could possibly lose yards. He knows the situation. He knew it was second and three. He tucks it in there behind his big offensive line. He picks up the first down. Here's Tim Billings, the co-defensive coordinator for Wake Forest. Deeks looking for some answers now as the Hokie offense is really starting to roll. Here's Wilson again. Tries the right side, breaks one tackle, and falls forward near the 33-yard line. Yeah, the one thing with David Wilson, you're not going to shoulder tackle him. He does not go down from shoulder hits. You need to wrap him up. That's about the third or fourth time I've seen him bounce off a Wake Forest tackler tonight that hasn't wrapped him up. Second and seven. Blitz coming. Thomas throws, pass caught, first down and more. It's Drager, he's across the 45, up to the 46-yard line. That's a gain of 13 and a hokey first down. Yeah, good job by the tight end there, Stengel. We've seen him run this route earlier tonight. He just does it again. It's an out cut. The defender falls down. He does a nice job catching the ball and getting upfield. Well, Drager's been busy catching the ball. Yeah, and he does a really nice job. Smart catches it. Nice soft hands for a big tight end. He gets up field for positive yardage. Coming into the game tonight, he only had three catches on the year, and two of those were against Miami last week. From the 46, Boykin in motion. Going to try the left side now. And well defended by Wade. Wilson unable to really get things going as they tried the left side. Tim Billings, when we were talking about the Wake Forest defense, and you mentioned him in our call with, with the Deacons coaches this week, he said that they really got a lot of hats to the ball. They're, they're really fast. And Billings said that this defense reminded him a little bit of the defense that he ran in Marshall in 99 when they went undefeated and held opponents to less than 10 points a game. And yeah, Jim Grove said this might be the fastest defense he's ever coached. Second and 14. That is going to be ruled as an incomplete pass. 
Yeah, good job by Kenny Okoro there. The corner, he comes up, and he does a good job. He wraps up the receiver, and in doing so, he knocks the ball loose. Good job by that corner. Our Demon Deacons fans trying to rev up their defense here, making some noise. Third and 14 coming up. Just a great job by Okoro getting that right hand in there, punching the ball away from Jared Boykin. Thomas. Incomplete. This receiver fell down and is down at the 45-yard line of Wake. And that's DJ Coles. And Cole's going to need a little help to come off the field. Yeah, it looked like his feet got tangled up with the Wake Forest defender on his crossing route there, and he went down. Hopefully he's okay. Cole's 19 catches on the season. Had his first career touchdown catch, a 49-yarder against Arkansas State. A nice job there by the Wake defense. They came out and did what they needed to do, stop Virginia Tech and force them to punt. Randover's been busy tonight. He had a career-best punt of 58 yards in the first half. Jackson is back to receive this punt at the Wake 20. Randover had a little bit of trouble getting a hold of that ball. It will take a Tech roll inside the 20-yard line and down to the 17. So the Wake defense stopped the Hokies for the first time in a while, but they still trail by 18. 28-10, Hokies lead the Demon Deacon. Imagine finding a need, achieving a solution. Identifying a problem. Discovering the answer. Joining a community. Finding yourself. Wake Forest University. Imagine what you can achieve. 7.31 to go in our third. Wake Forest has got the football back. Operating from their own 17-yard line. Pendergrass on the carry. And the crowd just keeps moving forward. Whistle not blowing. And now finally it's blown. Good effort by Pendergrass. That ball came out, but after the whistle had blown. That's going to be ruled down at the 26-yard line. That's a gain of nearly eight. Yeah, and they're going to mark it down, as you said, at the gain of eight. And you're going to see it. It's the zone read, and Pendergrass, I mean, he's a strong runner, and he just gets in there with that massive amount of bodies, and he just keeps going, 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 going. And the ball gets ripped out eventually, but the whistle had blown, and it was an eight-yard pickup when it was all said and done. Pendergrass again. Very close to the first down. Needed to reach the 28. You know, Pendergrass has really answered the bell tonight. He's really not that tall, just 5'9", 200 pounds, but without Josh Harris available tonight because of a hamstring, it is a first down. He's been asked to handle the majority of the load carrying the football. Harris is dressed out, but has not appeared. Nick Knott, who is Chris Gibbons' brother, was expected to possibly see some carries. And they were so thin at the running back spot tonight that Orville Reynolds, a true freshman from Coral Springs, Florida, arguably the fastest guy on the Demon Deacon squad, dressed out. They, were, they thought they might have to burn his red shirt. Here's Price. And he is dragged down at the 30-yard line. How about Marshall, Corey Marshall? Well, I was going to say, I, I talked about it earlier. Watch how fast these defensive linemen are today. Well, I'm glad I don't play anymore because Price looks like he can run for a mile here. He tucks the ball, and he just gets hawked out from a big 260-pound interior defensive lineman for Virginia Tech by Corey Marshall. And Corey Marshall stepping in for the injured Antoine Hopkins, who went down for the season. Screen pass, under grass. Dancing, who knocked down at the 40 yard line. It is another force down for the Demon Deacons. And that's how you slow down a defense that's aggressive that has their ears pinned back. You run a screenplay, and it was a nice call play to Brandon Pendergrass there. You're going to see it. 
Makes the catch, gets up, reads his block nice, gets down the side and actually steps out. And then he's going to pay the price from J.R. Collins, who finishes him off. Uh, totally legal. He didn't know he stepped out three yards earlier. Good hit by Collins. Pendergrass again. Tries dancing around the left side and lost a yard. It'll be second down and 11. So Corey Marshall last week stepped in after Antoine Hopkins was lost for the season with a torn ACL against Clemson. Had about 25 snaps against Miami, and the defensive coaches were a little bit upset with him. Um, he was had problems lining up in the proper position, but they love his potential. And he's just a freshman from Petersburg. One of six true freshmen to play for the Hokies this year. Second down, Palatin, Price. Rolling, throwing, passes caught. Down to the Hokie 39, the reception to Danny Dembry. And that's Dembry's second catch of the game. Well, and I like the discipline by Tanner Price. He wanted to go long there to his number one guy, Chris Gibbons, but he was covered. Dembry comes across on a crossing route at about 15 yards, and Price has enough patience to wait and get it to Dembry on the cross in stride for a great game. Wait quickly back to the line of scrimmage on first and 10 from the Hokie 39. Price going long. Inside the 10, knocked away at the last minute. Gibbons wanted a flag, none coming. And that's another strong defensive play by that redshirt freshman, Dietrich Bonner. Yeah, great play by Bonner. Listen, Wake had what they wanted one-on-one. -on -one. Bonner, the backup corner against Gibbons, their number one receiver. The pass was there, and Bonner it does the right thing. He just keeps running stride for stride with Gibbons. At the last second, he reads his eyes. He throws that right arm up, and he breaks the play. A nice job by the cornerback. No, there was no interference on that play. That was just good defense. Absolutely. Second and ten. Got to believe this is four down territory for Wake. Blitz coming. Price throws. Pass caught. First down and more. Gibbons inside the 20-yard line. Knocked out of bounds at the three. That's going to be uh, at the eight. That's going to be first and goal hey, for Wake. Great job by Wake. Virginia Tech sent the blitz off both edges. Okay, they picked up the blitz. Nice. Gave Price time. You see it. Pentagrass steps up, picks it up. He knows, Price knows he has one-on-one -on -one coverage with Gibbons. He finds him, makes one juke, and down the sideline for another huge gain for Wake. 31 yards on the catch. First and goal from the eight. Price, the handoff to Pendergrass. Maybe a yard, and that's going to do it. But, you know, getting back to that last play, such an intelligent play by Tanner Price. Realizes you have the blitz, realizes where his one-on-one -on -one coverage is, and, boy, he gets his best receiver the ball in space and makes him, him get, lets him make a couple moves and pick up a big play. Tweedy made the stop. Second and goal at the seven. Trips to the bottom. Price looking that way. End zone incomplete. Campanero was the intended receiver. Gibbons now with three consecutive 100-yard receiving games. Yeah, that time Campanero ran across the formation, tried to get into the corner of the end zone. I don't think Tanner Price saw a second Virginia Tech defender there. Campanero was actually double covered there. Lucky no interception on that play. Wait tonight, 0 of 9 on third down. A big one here, third and goal from the seven. Price steps up, and he's going to be brought down after a loss of one, and it's fourth and goal from the eight. And Jim Grobe's going to send the field goal team on. And just great coverage by the Virginia Tech defensive backs. Price has time. The pocket's going to clap. He steps up, and Zach McRae comes up with a sack. But, you know, give that sack. That's one of those coverage sacks. Boy, they did a great job there with their man-to-man -man coverage in the end zone. It's a 25-yard field goal attempt from the left hash. Newman has made 11 straight, including a 28-yarder in the first quarter.
It looks like Tech's got 12 guys. 12 men on the field by the defense. After distance to the goal, it remains fourth down. Well, the plot thickens, doesn't it? So it's going to be fourth and goal, but from the four-yard line. And now do you... Now here comes the offense. But, you know, this is one of these ones where the crowd might have... Sucked you into this one, Jim Grove. I mean, it, it, it's not like you need a yard. You still got to go four yards for the touchdown. We'll see if it backfires or not. Wake Forest on fourth down, five of eight. The Tech defense against fourth down attempts, one of seven. Price. Gunning the football. End zone, touchdown, Wake. Cameron Ford, the tight end. You know, they ran the offense back up. The play clock was running down. It was right at zero when they snapped it. Boy, and Tanner Price throws a strike in the back of the end zone to his receiver for the touchdown. What a great play and a great play call. Cameron Ford, the backup tight end, the beneficiary of that play. 12 plays, 83 yards. Five minutes and 27 seconds, a four-yard touchdown catch by Cameron Ford. The lead is 11, 28-17. Hokies lead the Demon Deacons. Oh, that's his first career touchdown catch. 28-17. Now here's what happened. The penalty that led to the fourth down and goal attempt. Yeah, Frank Beamer was trying to call a timeout. He knew he had 12 guys on the field. Didn't get the timeout in time. And you get a penalty for the illegal substitution. Too many men on the field. Price to Cameron Ford, it covered four yards, his first career touchdown. Oh, and the interesting thing is because Jim Grove was a late decision to run the offense back on, they just got the playoff by the skin of their teeth for a touchdown. From the one yard line. Ball is out momentarily, Wilson collects it, trying to get wide. Flag is down at the 10 and Wilson is down at the nine. And they're definitely going to have a block in the back, and there's a second flag up by the 27-yard line, so there may be two fouls on Virginia, Virginia Tech on the play. That was Pat. That was A.J. Marshall on the special teams tackle. Oh, boy. Yeah, and you clearly see the block in the back. Block in the back. Excuse me there. talking it over because like as I said there's another flag probably 50 yards away from that one so they're figuring out what they have this is a crucial part of the game right now for Wake Forest here's the call we have two fouls on the return team we have a personal foul unnecessary roughness number 39 to the return team that penalty's declined we have an illegal block in the back by number 39 of the return team. That will be half the distance to the goal. First down. That was a tough, tough play for Daniel Dyer. And the thing for Dyer is the one flag, as I said, it's 50 yards away. So he must have got called with a personal foul that we didn't see well before he got the block in, block in the back. But if you're going to get your money's worth, you might as well get a couple penalties. And he did. <laughs> And no doubt about Dyer with the block in the back there. Uh, clear, clear block in the back and, and a good call by the officials. From the four. Pokies try the middle of the line. Gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. Uh, Virginia Tech has been much more effective offensively since that opening quarter. Second quarter on, they put 28 on the board and piled up over 300 yards in total offense. And, and this is going to be a big series for them because Wake's got some momentum right now, Dave. And let's see if Virginia Tech offense can answer and quiet this crowd down. Thomas from his end zone. That pass. 
pass is caught out of the 34-yard line. Boykin again with another big play for Virginia Tech. Well, deep corner out. Thomas with another great pass as we look at the high end zone view. And you're going to see the corner. Kenny Akora undercuts the ball. He thinks he can knock it away. It goes just over his fingertips into the arms of Boykin for another big reception. Wow, what a great play to get them out of the shadow of their own end zone. You can see Boykin. Seven catches, 149 yards and a touch. I think he was upset if he had kept his feet. He might have scored on that. Trying to go wide to the right side. Oglesby just nowhere to go. A host of black shirts. Lost about a half a yard on that play. At least second down. But just another day in the office for Boykin. He's having one well of the game. Boykin's had a great series of back-to-back -back games. He had six catches for 120 yards and a touchdown against Miami last week. Thomas on the slant. And that is going to be ruled incomplete at the 37-yard line. Boykin unable to hold it. Yeah, and those slant passes like that, boy, Thomas needs to get that ball either in stride to Boykin or low and away so no one can catch it but him. Sometimes when you get it up too high in front of the receiver, boy, more times than not, it'll get knocked up in the air and intercepted. But Boykin almost made a great catch there. Third and ten. Tech two and nine on third down tonight. Outstanding 44% on third down conversions coming into this game. Thomas. Blitz is coming. Takes it right up the middle. Stretches it out. And he is, I think he's got the first down at the 43-yard line. And he needed every inch of that 6-6 six, six frame to get it. Yeah, and I'm looking dead down at the spot. He's going to have this first down. What a great run by Logan Thomas. Wow. A clutch run. He picks it up on third and ten on the final play of the third quarter. Fourth quarter coming up from BB&T Field in Winston-Salem. A good one tonight. Virginia Tech leads Wake Forest by 11 as we head to the fourth. Teaching is very important at Virginia Tech. It's about making a difference in people's lives. I teach because I want to train the next generation of scientists and engineers. Because every day one of my students does something amazing. I teach because it's a lot of fun. I love teaching students who are curious and passionate. Who share my enthusiasm. Who will put their heart out there and say, this is it. I love that. I want our students to become the leaders in their field and change the world. Twenty-eight seventeen. This game was 21-10 at the break. Both teams scored a touchdown in our third quarter. Now first down now for Virginia Tech as they begin the fourth. And Logan Thomas stacked up. Second down and eight as the ball is squarely in midfield. Let's go ahead and take a look at some scores now. Out of the ACC, Miami was able to win on the road at North Carolina. Virginia upsets Georgia Tech. Florida State wins at Duke, and Maryland has the lead on Clemson, though still a long time to play most of the second half. Don't find too many games where uh, Hokies are rooting for the Cavaliers. Yeah, right. Great win by Virginia. One of the best wins for that program in a long time. Thomas. <laughs> Incomplete. And just for a moment there, the possession of that football was in doubt. Well, he was thrown behind a little bit, and boy, Kyle Quarles. Yeah, Kyle Quarles was all over the field last week. And let me tell you one thing, this kid can bring the wood. He can hit, and he knows how to finish off a receiver, or should I say running back in that case. But a great job by the strong safety to separate man from ball. All right, last third down conversion on the final play of the third quarter. Logan Thomas was able to pick up 10 with a quarterback keeper. See what happens here. Third and eight. Blitz coming. Thomas throws. Pass is caught. That's a first down at the 42 yard line. Coles with a catch. Boy, absolute strike by Thomas. Throws it 
to the one place his receiver can catch it. DJ Coles, DJ Coles and he does. He comes back from the dead. Didn't he just need yeah, help he, off the field? He, he limped off a little while ago, but he's back. He runs a deep dig route in the middle of the field. And Thomas puts it on him for a big first down. So Logan Thomas, the redshirt sophomore quarterback for the Virginia Tech Hokies, coming up big on third and long situations here at a crucial point of this game. From the 43. Here's the pitch back to Ogilvy. Ogilvy. And he takes it down to the 40-yard line. It'll be a gain of three. Second down and seven. And it's Quarles again. Fifth-year senior from Tucker, Georgia. You know, and he plays strong safety, but in a lot of systems, he could step up and really be an outside linebacker. Second and long seven. Oglesby again. He's inside the 35, down to the 34. It'll be third down and a short two coming up for Tech. Great cut by Oglesby there. I like that. You're going to see it. It's a straight handoff up the middle. He cuts right. Move, man. Cuts left. I love that. Good vision out of the big back. Gets back. On that straight line, north and south, and now we're at third and short. Thomas on the keeper, and he just moves the pile. He's got the first down at the 31-yard line. And it's such a weapon. I mean, it really is like having a 12th offensive player when your quarterback can almost at will take a quarterback snap and move the pile two yards. I mean, and he gets hit. He gets stood up in the pile by the weight defense, but he's just big and strong, and he keeps piling forward and he picks up the first down how about this drive by virginia tech it started late in the third quarter at their own four yard line and now they have a first down at the 31 yard line of wake trying to deliver the knockout blow if they can right here to the demon deacons again they'll keep it on the ground and a good surge off the left side Oglesby again. Yeah. Going to pick up four yards on the carry. On that uh, quarterback's knee. In all fairness, Justin Jackson from Wake Forest stood up Thomas in the hole, but Jackson's listening at 220 and Thomas yeah, 250. Oh, yeah. So, a little bit of an advantage. 13th play of the drive. Out of the power eye. Not that time. And he ran right into Quarles' arms. Oglesby had nowhere to go. That's a loss of three. Yeah, great penetration. And you wonder, Oglesby's getting a lot of carries. you got to wonder if uh, David Wilson was a little maybe banged up on that pass play where uh, Kyle Quarles came and separated him from the ball. Back-to-back -back third and long conversions for the Hokies. They've got another situation right here. And we got a timeout, Virginia Tech. So Frank Beamer and company want to talk this one over. 10.57 to go in the fourth. Virginia Tech with the ball and the lead on the road at Wake, looking for their 11th consecutive road win, 28-17. 57 to go in the fourth quarter. Virginia Tech 28, Wake Forest 17. Let's take a look at our Sprint Unlimited update. These are games next week that are available on ESPN3. They include noon starts, Cincinnati at South Florida. The Bearcats with a big win over Louisville today. Jacksonville State at UK, 2 o'clock. Indiana State at Illinois State, 3 o'clock. Louisiana Tech at Utah State in the WAC. Chattanooga at Elon. Also, as we continue along our Sprint update, Unlimited update. Ohio at Akron in the MAC, 3.30. Nebraska at Minnesota. Iowa State hosting Texas A&M. Aggies got a big win today. 4 o'clock next Saturday, Fresno State at Nevada. And at 8 p.m., Texas Tech at Oklahoma. All those games available on ESPN3. And those games, just like this one, will be completely archived about an hour after its completion so you can go back and watch them later. It's sort of like having a DVR in the cloud. Third and eight. Going to the end zone. Touchdown tag. Marcus Davis.
and just a backbreaker on third and nine. You see Thomas step up. He finds where he has one-on-one, -on -one. and Marcus Davis does a nice job getting beyond the corner. Kenny Okoro, who's had a fine game tonight, but he gets a couple steps by him and gets the touch on, and as I said, just a backbreaker on third and nine. All right, I'd have to say that was a good timeout. <laughs> How about that? 14 plays, 96 yards, took six minutes off the clock, and just when you thought Wake was going to get back in this thing, bam. Uh, just a phenomenal drive by Virginia Tech to take all that time off the clock, come out of the shadow of their own end zone, and drive it down for a touchdown. 35. 17. And really, you felt it in the stadium. Wake had some momentum there after the touchdown. They get the penalties on the kickoff. Virginia Tech starting way in their own end zone. And boy, do they respond like a championship team. They bring it out from their own end zone and drive it down for a touchdown. Yeah, Logan Thomas is going to have a lot to talk about with his grandma this week. Yeah, he might Four not be. Four touchdowns, two throwing, two rushing, 312 total yards. Well, I was going to say, he might not have the percentage 23 and 25 as he had last week, but he sure has the yards. How about that? What a night. I mean, you go back through the history of Tech quarterbacks, you've got a lot of tremendous players. Michael Vick. Brian Randall was former ACC Offensive Player of the Year. Jim Druckenmiller. This is a pretty two-game, pretty, pretty strong two-game stretch for Logan Thomas. And he's only a sophomore. That's scary. Meyer knocks it through the end zone for a touchback. And the Demon Deacons will take it at the 20. So you still have time. You're down. 35-17, but now you got to start throwing the football. Well, yeah, and I think you got to up your tempo a little bit. You got to have a little sense of urgency. Get on the line of scrimmage. Get on the ball and try to get some snaps. Where you got to be productive uh, with it all set. So from the 20, try the handoff, and it's going to be a loss of a yard. Pendergrass had nowhere to go as Exum came up and made the stop. Pendergrass now 18 carries, 63 yards on the night. And I understand why the handoff. You just you got to keep the Virginia Tech defense, you know, honest. You got to keep them on balance. You just can't let them pin their ears back and think you're going to pass every time. You got to put some runs in there as well. Second and 11. Price on the rollout and the lefty throws on the run. Pass is caught up at the 31 yard line that is a first down Gibbons with the with the grab yeah nice play Tanner Price rolls out to his left which is his strong side throws a strike Gibbons does a good job picking up the first down and getting out of bounds but remember in college football once the ball spotted even though you're out of bounds that clock's going to continue to run when they set the ball unless you're under the last two minutes of the game we got Gibbons with seven catches 141 yards and a touchdown coming off the field and now the clock will start again as we get ready to turn under 10 minutes to play very interesting day in the ACC Georgia Tech has already lost Clemson is losing to Maryland and once again the run defense stuffs Wake Forest and Dietrich Bonner saying, you know, I need some more snaps. Well, I mean, he came off the bench. He's having a well the game. You're going to see it on the little give to Pendergrass. And boy, Bonner, like he shot out of a cannon, shoots up there from his corner position and just cuts Pendergrass right down in his tracks. And for Tech fans who are concerned about J. Ron Hosley going pro after his junior season, Bonner's a uh, giving you a pretty good indication that things are going to be okay. Corner blitz, incomplete. Yeah. So, 
Well, Bud Foster sending the blitz there, and Tanner Price just had to get, get rid of the ball too soon. Gibbons didn't come out of his break. Gibbons was the intended receiver, third and 13. And, and I like the changeup Bud Foster had from the first couple series. Wake was moving the ball with relative ease, and he's changed it up, and he's sent a lot of blitzes since then. Nine minutes to go in the game. Wake still looking for their first third down conversion. They are 0 for 10 in that category tonight. Pendergrass shifts to the right. Here's Tanner Price. Throwing again on the run. And that pass is caught. Demry with the reception. Very close to the first down. If he reached the 42-yard line, he's got it, and it is a first down. Yeah, and it's the correct spot. Denver did a good job. He came back to the ball, helping his, his quarterback out, who was scrambling. Does a great job, Denver, to come back for the ball. And he was actually sitting on the 42, so it's an absolute perfect spot and a first down. Pendergrass, big hole. Another first down to the Tech 46. That's really been the exception rather than the rule against Tech's run defense tonight. Well, yeah, you're going to see out in the pistol formation. It's just a lead handoff to Pendergrass. You let him cut back and find a seam, and he does a nice job. And even with 831, that's a good play call, as I said, to keep this Virginia Tech defense on their toes. Wake with 49 rushing yards tonight. Price throwing. Deflected away. Incomplete. It'll be second and ten. Miami rushed for over 270 yards last week at Lane Stadium against the Hokies. And there's really a, a rarity for Virginia Tech under Frank Beaver to win when they had fewer rushing yards. Lamar Miller of Miami last week, 18 carries, 166 yards, and a touchdown. He had four big runs. But tonight, Wake hasn't been able to get that big signature run. Yeah, absolutely. And over 1,000 yards combined in that game. Uncharacteristics with both those defenses. Blitz coming. Price escapes the pocket, throws on the run. And that is a catch for a first down at the 35-yard line. Campanero. Michael Campanero, redshirt sophomore from Clarksville, Maryland. And he does a good job to go down and catch the ball. Get his arms under the ball so it doesn't skip in off the turf. And he does a nice job catching it. And you'll see Price rolling out, get the throw, Campanero. Yeah, you see he gets the hands under the ball and makes the catch for the first down. Well, Wake's got to be thinking they've got to score touchdowns every possession now. Well, we may take another look at this play. The previous play is under review. All right, so going to take another look at that catch. Yeah, the replay, he's got to earn his money, which is the third of the game. And, and you're going to see it here. I think Campanero does a nice job. Let's watch his hands, and let's see if that ball skips. Because yeah, he's got black gloves on, and it looks like he has his hands under the ball and cradles it into his body. But once again, I think we are exactly where we are with the other two um, replay reviews. I just do not believe it's indisputable to reverse it from the call on the field, which, of course, was a completed catch and a first down. Well, from the angles we have, it looks like a catch. And, and this is a booth review. If it skipped in there, boy, Frank Beamer had a great look at that. You think he would have been hemming and hollering from the beginning. You know, we talked to the review official before the game tonight and just said to him, hey, nothing too crazy, <laughs> okay? And we really haven't had anything really crazy. No. But, you know, it, it, that is a crucial play. First down. All right, so it is a first down. We're three for three tonight, Dave, so... It's pretty good for us. Uh, the, the point I was going to make about Wake's offense, the last time they scored their only touchdown here in the second half, Tech went on the march for 14 plays and took six minutes off the clock. So they've got to be thinking touchdown, obviously, in every possession throughout the remainder of this fourth quarter. Blitz coming. Campanero, and he's ridden out of bounds. 
near the 33 yard line. Well, that was exactly the right play call as the blitz was coming from the right and Price threw that way. Well, and you had one on one. Chris Hill, the corner for Virginia Tech, does a nice job. You come up, you have to make a sure tackle. If he misses that tackle, Cameron Hill goes down the sideline for a touchdown. Gain of two, second and eight, trips to the top. Price sets, throws. Oh, what a really small window to put that in there and threw a strike to Gibbons. Oh, incomplete. We're going to have a look at it here. Yeah, he didn't throw a strike in here. And Campanero looked like he had it. And just can't hold on to it. And the defender, Exum, did a nice job of raking his arms down through Campanero's arms to knock it away at the last second. Yeah, my bad. That was Campanero. Pass was incomplete. Third down and eight. Swarmed under, fourth sack of the night for the Hokies. What a great defense there. Well, they had their ears pinned back and they came after him. Bruce Taylor coming from his linebacker spot and they really stepped up, up a notch on that play. And you're gonna see the pocket collapse. We're gonna see a couple of stunts there. And ultimately Taylor gets the sack, but they were flying around the football. Tariq Edwards was back there as well. Just great defense. Yeah, J.R. Collins might get a half a sack on that. Fourth down, got to go for it. They need the 25 for the Hokies. Price swings it out and brought down well short of the marker. Tommy Bohannon, who had a touchdown catch last week against Florida State. That's his first catch tonight. It did not fool Virginia Tech. Well, and Virginia Tech was smart there. They actually dropped eight defenders back. They only rushed three. And they said, hey, we're going to give you everything underneath because we're going to come up and make the tackle. You got 20 yards to go. That's exactly what they did. You're going to see only three Virginia Tech rushers, which gives Price all day. He throws underneath, which is exactly what they wanted him to do. Hook, line, and sinker. And just come up and make the tackle. Tech fans starting to feel a little bit better about things now. Here's the handoff to Wilson. Wilson turns the corner and more. Flag is down, and he is down at the 44 yard line of the Demon Deacons. And this one's coming back. I can tell the way. Right guard James Brooks, big number 68. I can tell the way he's walking back that it's called on him. <laughs> Holding 13 offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, remains first down. And I'm wrong because he looked dejected, but he must have saw his uh, fellow teammate, tight end Randall Dunn. It was the backup tight end, Randall Dunn. And you're going to see him on the outside there. Absolutely, he hooks his arm. You got to have your hands inside the framework. He had his right arm on the shoulder pad of the Wake defender just for a second. You know, the line judge is looking right at that. And once you get it on the uh, outstretch of that shoulder pad, boy, they're going to throw the flag every time, especially on a sweep play. First of 19. Wilson again, this time around the left side. And he is knocked out of bounds at the 30 yard line. <laughs> Kenny Okoro drove him out of bounds. And, and Wilson knew he, he wanted to stay in bounds there. He put the brakes on, he tried to cut it back to keep it in bounds, and he ends up getting knocked out anyway. But of course, the clock will continue to run as soon as they reset the ball. So Wilson now, 14 carries, 76 yards, and a touchdown. Check that, 15 carries, 79 yards, and a TD. Yeah, and not a great enough, but very efficient. He, he's oh. ran the ball really well when he's had his opportunities. The Tech got down tonight, 10-0. Then scored 28 unanswered points. Logan Thomas on the keeper. Scott Petros dragged him down before he could really get rolling. Yeah, and that's that call quarterback drawing. And Frank Beaver, they're not going to do anything crazy. You know, he's an old-fashioned coach. He's been around a long time. He's won a lot of games. 
He knows, just control the ball, don't turn it over. A punt is not gonna hurt you. 547 and running, he's gonna use all the time in the play clock, and I guarantee you on third and long, you're probably gonna see a draw or even a, a, just a, a quick handoff, see if the, the running back can't pop it through there. Well, Wake has struggled tonight on third down, just one of 12. Virginia Tech is six of 13 on third down conversion attempts. Here's Wilson. He's got the first down, he's got more. Lost his shoe. Losing defenders two. Inside the 20. All the way down to the 14 yard line. So there's your 100 yard game. Well, did I just say that uh, David Wilson didn't have a great game? Check that. That run just made it a great game for him. Watch the shoe go flying. Well, and this is demoralizing for Wake Forest. It's third and 15, and it's just a straight leap play. Uh, Beamer just wants to run the clock out and punt the ball, and yet they straight handoff. And David Wilson, just unbelievable. Great run, breaking tackles, good stiff arm, ran out of his shoe. What else could he do on that play other than score a touchdown? We've heard of Yak. That was yards after shoe. Yeah, he went from just you know a pretty good game to an outstanding great game with that run. Oglesby inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. And so now Wilson has rushed for 100 yards in six games this season. And he is back out on the field now. I just, you know, I love, as a former running back, I love to see runs like that, boy. North and south, he's breaking tackles, he's running out of his shoes, he's throwing stiff arms, he stays in bounds at the end of the run. Uh, what a great job by David Wilson. Wilson is the lone setback, and he's got the football again. And he is spun down after no game by Kyle Corals. And Tech obviously content to let the clock run. Third down, Okie. This is the 18th career game of 20 or more carries for Wilson. Third down and five. They can pick up a first down at the four-yard line. Oglesby is going to be stopped shy of the marker. Right down at the seven. So fourth down here. And the field goal team is coming out. But, you know, great drive by Virginia Tech. Really, uh, you know, the run by Wilson really put the nail in the coffin for Wade. Just running all kinds of time off the clock. They'll kick a field goal here, and Frank Green will be a very happy man. That last note on Wilson. What was the point of that? that? That's his 18th career run of 20 or more yards. Okay. Sorry about that. Virginia Tech, and we've talked about one of the best programs in the country. 13 years in a row, they've had eight wins or more a season. What's Frank Beamer uh, upset about here? Sent the field goal team on and then came out onto the field very upset. Yeah, whatever it was, he's pretty upset. Cody Jornell is on to attempt the field goal. This will be a 24 yard attempt from the left hash. Well, he was still going at the official. You know, I think Frank Beamer may be upset with where the ball was spotted. Not necessarily the yard line, but so far over on the left hash. 2.24 to go. Field goal attempt coming up. Tech leads Wake 35-17. Following the timeout, Virginia Tech lining up for a 24-yard field goal, leading Wake Forest in Winston-Salem 35-17, two and a half minutes to go. And the kick is up and good for Cody Jornell. And 
with that, we'll take another quick break. 2.22 to go in the fourth. Virginia Tech leads Wake 38-17. You're watching ACC Football on ESPN. Tonight's presentation of College Football on ESPN3 is presented by Sprint. All football, no limits, only from Sprint. 2.22 to go in the fourth. Virginia Tech, 38. Wake Forest, 17. Demon Deacon's about to get the football again. And that kick will sail through the end zone by Justin Meyer. So Wake will have it at the 20-yard line. Wake led this game 10-0, and then Reedy would turn it around. Uh, it was like the light switch was off in the Virginia Tech's house, and it got flipped on. You know, I just think Wake came out, they were pumped up, and uh, Virginia Tech was a little flat. I think the coaches made some adjustments on defense. I think they got a little more aggressive on defense. Started blitzing Tanner Price and Wake. And I think that really uh, got them going on defense. And offensively, they were just slow out of the gate, but they got going. And so much concern about the Virginia Tech defense, the starters who were unable to go in tonight's game. I think the defense has played well. New quarterback in the game now. Ted Stakakis takes it to the 24-yard line. Stakaitis, a 6'1", 205-pound redshirt junior from Ponte Verde Beach, Florida. Another one of the guys from Nice High School. Stakaitis um, came into the game late at Syracuse and was really unable to, to get Wake Forest over the hump, and the Demon Deacons ended up losing that game in overtime to the Orange. Pendergrass again on the carry. Takes it to the 32-yard line. And Pendergrass has had a good night tonight going in for Harris. We talked about it throughout the game, and he's really ran the ball very effectively and, and nice tonight. Zakaitis actually began last year as a starter and had three starts. Started well against Duke, but then injured his hand. Zakaitis. Tries the left side and takes it out to the 33-yard line. Inside of 90 seconds to play. And Jim Brooks, he's just content with running some plays here. Getting Stakaitis some more. Uh, and then, uh, you know, go to the drawing board and get ready for next week. Stakaitis followed some guy named Tebow at East High School. Not a bad guy to follow. Maybe it is a bad thing to follow. I be, don't know. It's gonna big be footprints. Big weekend for him. Going to get the start against Jacksonville tomorrow. Stakaitis. And Gibbons paid for that. Trying to make the catch at the 40 yard line. That was a painful play, but he's had a good night. Gibbons tonight, seven catches, 140 yards, and a touchdown. And now, if I'm Jim Grove, I pull Chris Gibbons off because you do not want his head getting taken off at the end of the game like this. He has his guy beat, but Exum does exactly what you should do as a free safety. You sit there in center field, you wait, and you say, come on, receiver, come my way. And as soon as he does, you go and you separate him from the football. And, boy, you don't want to see Chris Gibbons or anybody, for that matter, get hurt late in a game like this. It's out of reach. Third down and eight. Pendergrass tonight running the football, 11, 21 carries, 80 yards, the most for him since 2008. Across the 40-yard line, up to the 42. And that's Davis on the catch. And they don't have to run up another play if Jim Grove elects not to. They can end it here. Uh, there's less time in the uh, play clock than there is the game clock. Wake Forest, their winning streak is going to be snapped. Their attempt for the first time since becoming members of the ACC to win consecutive games against ranked teams is also going to go by the board. Wake Forest and Boston College are the only current members of the ACC to never do that. Clemson did it already this season. Virginia Tech 
continues their record of success against Wake Forest here in Winston-Salem. They have now beaten them here eight consecutive times, have not lost to the Demon Deacons here in Winston-Salem since 1970. They add to their nation's longest road winning streak. They have now won 11 consecutive road games. Greeny, well, final thought, 38-17. They're, they're a great program. Look, you don't go to 18 straight bowl games. You don't win eight-plus games a year, 13 years in a row. You're not a great program. They started out slow tonight. They made the proper adjustments to shut that wake offense down. It looked great in the first couple series. Uh, they got after Tanner Price. And then offensively, boy, they got Logan Thomas going in another 300-yard performance by that young man. So Virginia Tech goes to 6-1, and 2-1 and one in conference play. Wake drops to 4-2, and 3-1 and one in the ACC. So for Rini and Goldie, I'm Dave Weekly saying so long from Winston-Salem, where the final score is 38-17. The Hokies win it to watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.